Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Chris is with me, and today we will talk about our trading philosophy and methods. Uh, we will talk about uh, ourselves, how we actually developed our methods, uh, what are uh, systems and methods that we trade, and uh, why we actually care for traders, why we care for your uh, well-being. So before we start, as always, a quick risk disclaimer explaining that Forex and CFDs are leveraged products and can result in losses that exceed your deposits. And this presentation and the video is for informational educational purposes only. So if you want to get a corresponding information on charting conditions and any other detail, you should visit ironmarketsglobal.com, select your country of residence, and of course, contact an appropriate entity. Uh, now also, why do we trade with armor markets? Definitely best index offerings. If you trade DAX index, you know that the spreads are very low, very good, and I can say really the best in industry order sizes and execution. Of course, MT4 and MT5 uh, award-winning Supreme Editions are a must for every serious trader. So uh, today I have a lot of things to show you. And I will start first uh, as an introduction for all of traders who know me and who don't know me. Uh, again, my name is Nenad, and I've been uh, doing a lot of things in my past on Forex Factory. So Forex Factory was basically one of my first uh, trading uh, forums. You need to know that Forex Factory is maybe the biggest website for uh, Forex trading in the world. And uh, well, uh, out of all traders that have been involved in Forex trading, uh, I was ranked the third uh, before I actually was moved into the commercial section. Uh, back then, when I started to trade on Forex Factory, uh, I was a, a member of free forums. Uh, but of course, because uh, we are involved with uh, commercial products, right? Uh, that is why about Chris and I have become actually commercial members. Now here, my history really dates uh, a for, from a long time ago. I mean, it's not that long in terms of years, but uh, in terms of trading, I think I have really good experience. Because when I started to post on Forex Factory, well, you see, guys, that was uh, back then in 2010, and uh, since then, really, uh, our fan base has grown a lot. And there were a lot of, lot of uh, great comments here. Some of these people also I knew personally. We met a few times. And I'm still keeping my thread alive. Uh, I started actually posting on Euro-Dollar forums. And uh, usually when, uh, when people actually recognize my name for, from Forex Factory, they usually recognize it uh, from uh, Euro Dollar Forum. But, well, uh, I need to say that uh, definitely this has been a big, big and vast experience for me because my thread Spiders then uh, has grown into one of biggest threads. And when I remember back then uh, it started, uh, I started a thread in, uh, in 2014. And uh, basically up to 2000, no, it was 2011. Yes, I know it was 2011. And by the time in 2015, I, uh, the thread has gained more than 4 million views. Uh, then, of course, now it's in commercial section. So I post uh, also our uh, things, uh, reposting things mostly. It's not very active. But back then it was uh, active. So uh, we started also by uh, one uh, of my friends, uh, his name was Black Widow. We actually started uh, with uh, promoting our, uh, it was like, uh, not the signals, but basically we were also giving setups as Chris and I uh, do today. Uh, we also were giving uh, free trade uh, directions, ideas, and uh, we're, we were posting charts. And uh, very soon, as I said, my thread has gained more than 4 million views. But when, when you are actually moved in a commercial section, well, you can do nothing about it. Because simply said, Forex Factory, uh, 
uh, does not like actually that you are involved in any of commercial activities and then you're actually put in the commercial section but i don't mind because uh, of course uh, we are also promoting our uh, great analysis on other websites you can read a lot about it on uh, of course forex uh, street then of course forex empire uh, dfid.com so there are a lot of lot of good uh, useful websites where you can also read the analysis of course our primary source now is uh Admiral markets and we also do an elite currency it's uh, our mine and chris mutual website so uh here you can also see uh the award that i actually got in 2017 on forex3.com uh, i was nominated for the best analysis best forex awards and basically the second place in best analysis the first place in forex awards and yeah very often uh, you might see some exclusive analysis uh, that i do with uh, forex street and basically this is one of the things that i did today so it was exclusive analysis uh now uh, let's get back to my uh, origins uh, when i started to do trading guys i uh, actually i was also involved in financial industry even before i started to trade so actually i knew uh, what forex was but uh, back then i didn't know i didn't know uh, how to actually trade so i basically opened the mt4 account and i started to do some trades first on that demo account then i went live and i thought that it was as most people do i thought that it was an easy job but of course trading is not an easy job and uh, in uh, well i think it was a couple of weeks when i burnt my first account and then i said okay i will not i will not be trading with my real money before i do actually something useful i want to uh, trade on demo account i want to be profitable on demo account first then i will trade live and what i did actually because i uh, well i will be honest with you i was also working with a company uh, and then during my day job i was hiding from my boss i was actually always pressing this window uh, button when he gets in the office and i was looking at charts i was analyzing the charts literally literally uh, 24 10 12 maybe because uh, each day each single day uh, during uh, the week even for uh, even on on weekends i was studying the price even more than eight hours i think it was like 10 hours per day i was totally totally in love with forex market and i tried to develop something uh, from my own knowledge i read a lot i was reading uh, some books i tried to incorporate it everything i tried to see how it goes on demo account and i think i still keep that first demo account statement here with me uh, somewhere on my hard disk uh, and uh, yeah it was like one year full of demo trading and it was very successful demo trading before i actually went live and one of the things uh, why my demo trading was that successful it was because i treated my account as if it was alive guys so one of the things i did with demo account i treated as if it were a live account i was very very happy uh, how uh, it turned out and then i started to trade uh, on live account of course uh, live trading is it, it uses a different psychology compared to uh, to compared to uh, demo trading but of course uh, for me everything is the same because uh, i treated demo account also with lower conservative this risk and it was basically the same with real money the same methodology the same risk everything was the same and uh, it was bit bit uh, I mean, not I cannot say it's now easy for me, but it was actually a good uh, and very very easy learning curve how to differentiate a demo and live account because uh, as I said, I was trading demo account, trading live the same way I did on demo was not that hard, not hard at all. Basically, it was the same. Uh, today uh, we are actually doing a lot of webinars with Admiral Markets. We are doing a lot of stuff with Admiral Markets and uh, also with our uh, website uh, elite currency you can always read a lot about it and here you will always read uh, and you will always see live trading ideas 
first live trading webinar in a week is session recap where I post prefect setups. Then we have Wednesday live trading session. Then, of course, Chris has his own trading days, real time trading ideas. You can always watch live, real live trading uh, without any doubt. Uh, we do it, of course. Uh, on uh, live accounts and analyze price on live accounts. Uh, what is also very important uh, to say is that uh, before I went to full-time trading, I started price action even more, not just being successful on them on live trades. Uh, I decided to quit uh, my day job uh, very soon in 2012. And basically, well, maybe it was even 2000, yes, 2011 it was. And I started to do full, full-blown full-time trading and uh, definitely it was a great decision for me because uh, this is who I am this is what I do and this is what I will uh, basically do until uh, I have the strength to do uh, I, I I usually say about myself I am uh, I cannot say I am I am uh, <laughs> I am the avatar of the price itself but this is what what definitely definitely is what I love to do besides my job. I I'm still in love with, with forex trading and with financial markets, and uh, I can promise you that you will always have a full full hundred uh, percent from me support and from Chris too. So uh, then I, I I wanted when I was doing my uh, trades uh, when when I was posting uh, those signals and live trading setups on forex factory i think i needed to do something on my own and i uh, instantly made uh, a course it was named uh, practical naked trading and uh, basically it was not a course that was open to pre to people but they could use my setups it was trading basically just done by uh, price action there were no indicators involved from time to time, I got involved into MACD. I was trading candlesticks. I was trading literally, literally few indicators, like maybe it was like Bollinger Bands and MACD, and everything else was was totally, totally naked trading, like like uh, candlesticks. But of course, times have changed, and uh, definitely the trading is not the same as it was uh, 10 years ago. Trading is not the same as it was as it was five years ago. So naturally, we needed some uh, things to e evolve. And uh, I started uh, the course and I started my own method that I do. It's called Camarilla MACD. Uh, before I move on to Camarilla MACD, I want to tell you that I also uh, did a, a full uh, course uh, on uh, Admiral Markets uh, uh, YouTube. It's called Price Action Trading School. And I think that uh, I will also make some updates on price action trading school. Maybe Chris and I will do it together also so we can make some updates to price action training school using our knowledge. Uh, I think we could do it on Thursdays. Uh, so basically you can see it's a, it's a full course of lessons, three lessons where I analyze the price, where I actually analyze different tools, indicators, where I put it all together along with money management, with time factor, with all these great things. And we've been receiving really a great, great comments for a price action trading school. Now, of course, things need to evolve naturally and uh, I need to protect my uh, copyright. I mean, something that I did, it's called Camarilla MACD. Camarilla MACD is basically a full blown uh, method for trading uh, where I analyze the price. It has basically a couple of different templates. It has a template that is strictly for trading. And of course, uh, it has a template that is used in analysis. Both of the templates are very, very similar. Uh, they use some mo moving averages. They use MACD's, uh, of course, Camarilla levels. But, uh, but the analysis and uh, real uh, trading, you need to dif differentiate. When you do the analysis, you don't need to think about risk management when you when you do trading. You, of course, uh, above else need to think about risk management. So then I try to incorporate everything uh, what I know uh, in uh, in Camarilla MACD, and uh, definitely I think I succeeded in that because, uh, as you can see, a lot of lot of setups uh, 
Usually 80% of them uh, come in profits. Today, for example, we had a great uh, session, uh, real-time trading ideas, and uh, those real-time trading ideas uh, really were, were excellent today. Uh, they made us a lot of pips uh, uh, on euro dollar and also i posted uh, 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 that setup later you can check it on twitter so it was very very good and uh, usually uh, these uh, live sessions are something that i really enjoy to the fullest extent uh, here you can always uh, watch recordings of live uh, trade ideas uh, Again, said I do it, and uh, here uh, you actually you will see a lot of lot of lot of uh, good 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 uh, setups. For example, euro dollar today, as when I posted uh, the real time entry, it made 40 pips, 45 pips to the upside. Then it drops uh, 45 pips. So in a single day, you could have made like 90 pips on uh, euro dollar. You can always watch this webinar. So uh, the things are, as I say evolving and uh, you always need to think about how other people uh, react to your setup so my philosophy is always uh, give people uh, traders what they actually uh, want to uh, what they want to uh, know give them what they want to see for example uh, those setups that i post uh, usually will be seen instantly because i tweet about them and uh, these setups that i trade are usually very, very, very calculated and very, very uh, with, with a low risk. Uh, you need to know that uh, every trader has different opinion on uh, things that uh, Chris and I do. And a lot of traders might say, OK, guys, uh, why don't you uh, take uh, full price projections? Why don't you uh, make entries that will always give us a full ATR uh, or let's say 50, 60 pips? Uh, that is what I tried to explain a couple of times, and I will explain again. Guys, you simply cannot uh, watch, uh, you cannot place trades on a set and forget basis. Because let's say today, Euro dollar, it made 59 pips, while the ATR of 14 days is 69 pips. What it means, the ATR? Now, this is also my philosophy, and it's very connected to this webinar, so I will try to explain the best as I can. The ATR. Uh, gives you a full price projection guys and uh, again uh, if you see this my sell limit i know why i would again sell euro dollar from this spot because if it comes here for me this is confluence zone uh, and it has again possibility that the price will drop but why do i say then uh, atr is important because if i know that the atr is 69 pips and the price has made 59 pips I don't want to take full price projection because the price might drop and then it might reverse. That is why I use profit stops. So if you compare euro dollar to, let's say, for example, Australian dollar, you will see that those are slow moving pairs, only 57 pips. ATR, usually at the end of the day, it projects a price movement according to its calculation. So ATR has two lines. The top line is ATR projection high. The bottom line, line is ATR projection low. When this ATR is broken to the upside or to the downside, these pivot points will uh, realign itself, making the ATR overshot its target. So if I know that the Australian dollar is having 57 pips on intraday time frame, if I take 20 pips, it's still, guys, it's, it's like, if it, 25 pips, it's like 50% of its ATR. In trending uh, environment, taking uh, in between 45 and 70% of the ATR is great. Uh, in ranging environment, and markets are mostly, you know, they're ranging usually. They have moment, but sometimes they're ranging. You can take even 10, 20% of that and be happy with it. That is why I prefer to trade fast moving pairs such as GBP, New Zealand such as uh, GBPN, I really prefer to trade uh, those uh, fast-moving pairs. Uh, the point in intraday trading is to protect your profits. So once I see that ATR is 129 pips and I made, like, like let's say, 60 pips, for me, that's great because I already made 50% uh, of its ATR. 
So you cannot treat the same pound, yen, euro, dollar, uh, New Zealand dollar. Each of these pair, pairs have different calculation, different ATR. Some of pairs are moving in a fast uh, way. Some of pairs are moving in a slower way. So you need to decide uh, what you want to do with your trades. Should you close earlier? Should you scale out? Should you actually place a profit stop? One of my favorite uh, my favorite strategies is to place a profit stop. So once I see that I'm in a nice profit, I tend to move my stop loss in profit and that way I secure uh, free pips. That is what I usually do. Of course, guys, uh, everything uh, here, what you can uh, hear from me and of course what you can uh, read uh, is always published on Admiral Markets, uh, Lead Currency, Forex Street, uh, those websites and of course, uh, you can always ensure, uh, I can always ensure you that you will have a best possible setups for the day. Because my trading day usually starts uh, early before London. Then I need to analyze the price. I need to see which of the setups can be most profitable today. And when I decide that it's right time to pause the analysis, when it's the right time to tweet it, I mean, when I post it, I instantly tweet about it so you can read it. But Timing is very important. Some days are not great for trading. So then I tend to pick uh, some slower moving pairs, but some other days are very good for trading. And then I also post some uh, faster moving pairs such as GBPN or GBP New Zealand, or let's say Euro Yen, those faster moving pairs. Uh, have in mind that uh, one of my... Uh, great uh, one of the things that i really am proud of and that i really think i excel is uh, risk management because my risk management is always uh, when when making intraday's uh, uh, placing profit stops uh, for that kind of strategy to be successful in you need to have good money management and you need to trade with low risk uh, just speaking about risk to reward i mentioned many times for intraday trading risk to reward is not important for intraday trading, you need to have a method that gives you at least 70% accurate entries. And by doing correct money management, you should be successful. But whenever you break a rule of uh, uh, not, uh, for example, one of my rules is never ever to over leverage, never ever to do revenge trades. If you break a single rule, then everything that you did for a month or two or three months can be taken out in a single only guys a single trade that is why you need to be very very careful when you are doing uh, when you are trading uh, with uh, with any leverage at all so that is why i suggest lower leverage and you need to have a good method that will give you 70 percent of accuracy at least uh, risk to reward uh, to in today's market is simply is not ju uh, justified if you trade intraday for swing traders for people who actually uh, do some swing trades or let's say intra-month swings, it's okay. But for intraday trading, you really, really need to think about profit stops. And of course, one of the things that I also want to tell you, uh, guys, uh, sharing is caring. Uh, we are traders too, and we really want you to be successful. A lot of people uh, who actually don't know uh, what Forex trading is, they should bring bring them here bring them to our live trading webinars bring them to see how it's live trading bring them to see how they can actually make money it maybe they have their full time jobs but still guys uh, it's it's you have all the right tools for trading excellent admiral markets mini terminal correlation matrix uh, analysis templates uh, bring them to trade bring them to learn about trading and maybe if they have their uh, day jobs they still can make money part-time they still should be able to make money on consistent basis uh, even if they have day jobs because if i post a setup on one hour time frame you just need to wait for a price to come in the zone check the price for time to time see if the price is in the poc zone pull the trigger it's that easy guys it's very easy when you have uh, someone like Chris and me to actually guide you uh, to uh, uh, through trading. So as I say, always sharing is caring, uh, and uh, really, I, I I am the most I'm 
really the happiest person when I see that there is 500,000 people watching me when I give lectures, when I make trades, because then I feel totally fulfilled and uh, I'm very happy because I believe I have good results and I believe in, 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 in trading. I believe that every trader is different, but because of that difference, some people can make uh, one, two, three percent per month. Maybe some others will make 10 percent per month. But most of you who trade with us should be actually profitable. And we are always there to help you out with any, any questions. So my philosophy is uh, to give you the best setups, to teach you how to fish and to share everything that is good. And that is why I say sharing is caring. You can always share, bring your friends, your family, whatever guys, whoever you want to our live webinars to see real time price action trading. Now, Chris will continue. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask me. Thank you so much, Nenet. Great stuff there from uh, Tarantula. And uh, I wanted to share a couple of slides with you too. And uh, let me first get the screen sharing going. Basically, as you might know, I'm you know, as, as a style looking primarily at uh, market structure, analyzing patterns, and uh, basically trying to combine that to see where the setups, where the space is, and uh, not much really focused on let's say combinations where we find uh, signals and stuff like that. I'm more analyzing wave analysis as well and stuff like that. So that's of course something you might already know, but let's dive into some specifics here. Hopefully you see the screen at this moment. There we go, now you should be seeing it. Is it good? So what I basically do, uh, my method in the live webinars with Adam Markets, of course, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, uh, and uh, basically, and also in the, in the video on Monday, basically, when I look at the, the market, it doesn't really matter which market, of course, I am, as you, as you know, more focused on Forex market, but I take a look at commodities, I take a look at the stock indices, and here and there, some, some CFDs occasionally. So it's, it's all the same in a way, right, when you look at a chart. It's all about these three things when analyzing uh, the chart, and this is my favorite triangle as I call it of analysis because I think it when you do this you understand the larger picture of price and I think that basically when you do this you understand what's going on you understand what the roadmap is of price and you can try to find setups if the chart looks good within that roadmap all right and these three things if you do those three things you you know there's nothing that typically you'll be missing right it's a full picture it does take some time <clears throat> and there are some shortcuts how to do this without uh spending too much time per currency pair it also depends on how you want to trade you know some traders rather trade a couple of pairs more intensively others like to scan more pairs you know i am a bit of a mixture i probably look relatively closely at i don't know 12 or so and the other 12 or 13, I kind of look quickly. So trend and impulse, very important to know where that flow is going to, right? Trading with that flow, so much easier uh, than against it. So if you can analyze that and understand it and see where that direction is heading, you know, that's, that's already one step ahead of the game. Then support and resistance. Yes, where are the, those levels that could stop price? Where are those levels that you know, it's tough for, for price to break through, where could it bounce, understanding basically how far the trend can go. And then, because it's basically a battle, right, between the trend and support or resistance, which one is going to win? And then you get the price patterns. Those patterns are, they're like the, they kind of give a heads up which side could win, trend or support or resistance. And those patterns are very important so that we understand what the, the, the charts are really communicating to us. It's like a language <laughs> in many regards, excuse me. And the more we look at charts, the more we understand what the charts are communicating to us, and the better we are and understand, are able to understand it. It's like a language. If we know a few words, we won't really know much what's going on. If we have thousand words, we know a little bit more, of course. If we have 5,000 words, well, we're 
almost fluent, right? And we can talk to, to locals uh, in, in their language and, and almost understand everything of the context, right? So, so markets are the same. You need, if you want to fully understand what's going on in the chart, you need to know these three things. And it's not, it is like building a language. So it does take time to practice. It does take time to understand. And, you know, the, the more you are involved in looking at the charts, of course, the quicker you learn, right? If you look 50 minutes a day or 50 minutes a week, it doesn't go as fast, but still every day counts. If you do it every day, it's better than doing three hours, you know, on day one, not looking at it for four months and doing another eight hours. Consistency is, you know, from that point of view, very important because that's where you build up that practice. It's like a language. If you don't speak it for six months, you're going to lose a little bit, right? Um, and it goes pretty quickly, if, if you might have noticed. I do that. So anyhow, I do this on multiple time frames. So I look at uh, typically three time frames at the minimum before entering, right? And the, and the middle time frame, for instance, if I use a combination of one hour, four hour, and daily, then I uh, do most of the analysis on the four hour chart. And I check the daily chart for just a quick view of what's going on, patterns, support or resistance, primarily. So with regard to patterns, I want to focus a little bit more on which patterns you know, are important for me because they are such a crucial role within understanding the market structure. So wave patterns, chart patterns, divergence patterns, impulse and correction are for me key. Not everyone will want to use wave patterns. That's fine. And you can you could live without it, right? Many traders do not look at waves, and that's perfectly fine. Now, why are these four specifically so important? Because chart patterns kind of indicate the psychology of the moment. You know, right there, you can have a rising wedge, a falling wedge, a bear flag, bull flag. Those indicate uh, a likelihood that price will continue with flags. Uh, the triangle indicates that if price breaks. Uh, through support or resistance, right? Then it, it's going to be a breakout probably, right? In one uh, direction. So then we have divergence patterns where price might be completed at one point, right? Where the trend might be completed, right? So if we have divergence patterns, that indicates the potential end of a trend. Uh, impulse and correction, very important for understanding the, the sentiment in the market. Right, where is the flow going to, and how how long is it correcting, and when does it break above that correction, and all of that. So if we have, for instance, here your dollar, we had upside trend, but we had divergence between these tops here, between these tops. So that was a, a warning that price might retrace back to this fib, and then we broke through support, indicating that we might retrace even further down. Right, just to give you an idea. <laughs> Sorry. So once we do our homework, let's say, and from my point of view, the currency pair or instrument is interesting to trade, then I take a look at it in a different way. So analysis sometimes could be very quick for me, right? It could be a few minutes, depends if it's interesting or not. If it is interesting, I dive into it in more detail. So I look at, now it's the trading bit. So first part was analysis. And I, I really think that analysis is important. You just can't skip it and go right into trading. I think that it's not good. Uh, it's possible, but from my point of view, you get more mileage from analyzing first. All right, so then we go into tri the triangle of trading. So what do I do? I look at the, where's the confluence? Where are the decision zones, right? So I, what I'm looking for is a break. So if there's a good break, for instance, on a daily chart, good breakout candle, right, of an of a important support zone. So that's a decision. Price has decided to break through support and continue lower. So that's a break of decision zone. All right, so then I can move on to the next step and I'm looking like, okay, what I'm, how I want to trade, am I looking for a break? Am I looking for a bounce, bullish, bearish? And is there any space? So, okay, we might have a bearish break here and I might be looking for continuation of that bearish breakout, but where's the next support? And is there enough space to trade it that way? If the answer is still yes, then I'm looking for a trigger and an entry. The trigger simply in the sense that, you know, what is the confirmation? 
So for instance, the daily candle could be the breakout. But what is the trigger for me? The trigger might be, I don't want to trade it on the daily chart, so I might zoom into the hourly chart, for instance, and I may want to, I see a bear flag, for instance, on a lower time frame, so I see a break and I see a bear flag. So the trigger could be, for instance, a bearish four hour candle at the 50 fib right here, or the break, breakout candle below the support trend line. All right, so that could be triggers and entries. The difference between trigger and entry is, is small, but still sometimes useful. So for instance, we had the breakout candle on the daily chart. We have a uh, bear flag, right, on the lower time frame. So I might say, okay, I want a retracement to the 50 fib. When it gets to the 50 fib, then that's my trigger. That's when I'm interested, but it's not necessarily where I enter. I enter when uh for instance we have a small head and shoulders on a 50 minute chart and a break of that head and shoulders that's my entry so or for instance price bounce off a, a daily 50 fib so we have for instance an uptrend and a correction to the 50 fib on the daily chart so the trigger is the fact that price has reached the 50 fib but i might not want to enter at the 50 fib i might want to see a bullish engulfing candlestick pattern or just any bullish candlestick pattern on that time frame or one time frame lower for instance right that would be my actual entry so the trigger is the fact that price is at the 50 fib but the entry could be a candlestick reaction to that fib do you see that slight difference there so you can split that in two rows if you see what i mean or just one more example, you have a trend line, support trend line, and there's a breakout candle going through it. That's the trigger, for instance, and it could be the entry too, but if you want to split it, it's possible. You can say, that's my trigger, and I zoom into the 50-minute chart and wait for a small bear flag and take the break of that bear flag. Or I take the entry upon the 50% 50, 50 retracement of that candle. That's my entry. The trigger is the candle. The entry is halfway the candle. These are all kinds of combinations possible. The list is endless in a way. That's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of trading with these concepts. It's also a little bit more difficult. You need a little bit more practice because you have the space to find combinations like this. So that's how I tackle the trading then. And ultimately, of course, then there's the entry if it has gone through these check mark or checklist. Now, how do I, you know, it might best tools that I want to use for understanding that path of least resistance, let's say the roadmap, the expected roadmap of price is based on these things in my view, which is the oscillator and moving averages for analysis. It is trying to understand the context of price. Then when I'm looking for decision zones, I'm often using Fibonacci and Wiz and also moving averages, but in a different kind of a different role. And then for actual entries, I'm using trend lines, candlesticks, candlesticks, candlestick breakouts, for instance. But also, I use my own software. I have SWAT software that I use, developed by myself, for um, for those triggers too. All right. So it, you know, you can see that I use different tools at different stages of the price development, and um, each has their own kind of function at a different spot sometimes multiple spots but this is how i try to analyze the roadmap so so that i understand that you know if there is a break and there is space you know then i have a method to trade it so this is an analysis this is this this is analysis this is decision zone and this is entry tools then of course last but not least there's that management right this is then uh, my philosophy basically is to give a trade some space then if it has been open for a while i want to tighten up that management then if i am at a break-even point or small profit or maybe even a small loss i would let the trade again give it some space and some breathing room and become a little loose in the management of the trade and then when it gets close to the target or it takes too long i turn back into a tight management of the trade this loose tight loose tight uh, is for me the perfect way of tackling it, it fits my psychology i like it it's not probably for everyone i guess 
nothing typically is, but uh, perhaps it helps you. There are separate trade management webinars that we've had with Admiral Markets, and you can check out the YouTube channel and you'll find the trade management webinars. There are lots of topics there, in fact, with the YouTube channel of Admiral Markets that none of them have done in the last five years. So I think that if you wanted to, you could spend tons of time there. Uh, so, you know, check it out <coughs> afterwards. We don't have time now to, to dive into all of these in detail. I just wanted to give you an overview of, you know, my flow of how I approach analysis and trading and then management. Uh, so this is, this is my kind of approach. And, you know, the selection of setups is, I don't want necessarily a hundred percent setup because then you might be waiting too long. So I kind of put the notch at 80% typically. I don't want to enter too many setups that are iffy. I don't want to wait for too many perfect setups because then I think that it becomes a little bit too, too cramped. So I'm looking like if the setup looks good, like at an 80% kind of confidence interval, I'll go for it. Also knowing the fact that my management of trading allows me to cut losses short. And I often get out for less than a full loss. But yeah, typically, you know, it could be 0 .5, half, full, half of the loss, 0 0.3. And, you know, typically this helps a lot with the equity curve because of the fact that I just need a normal win to be up already in, in positive territory. So from my perspective, it really helps me um, to, to keep those losses short. And, you know, if you look at the mantra, the, the, the slogans often used in trading, let your winners run, right? Keep your losses short. The keep your losses short part, I really try to do with this trade management. is really my, my, let's say, for about, maybe lack of a better word, holy grail or thing I concentrate on. Uh, and it's okay. I might sometimes lose some trades that I not lose some trades, but miss out on some wins. But often enough, it, it's, it's not that bad, to be honest, uh, often enough, often not, you know, often it's pretty good moment when I get out, but sure you, you will never avoid that aspect. I rather cut the, you know, the trade a little bit short, uh, even if it might turn into a loss, uh, even, even might turn into a win, sorry, then let it run too long. You got to find a balance. It cannot be too quick either, because otherwise you won't give the trade a chance. Then you might as well not have entered. So it is this balance. And uh, anyhow, that really go look at the trade management webinar because the specifics is a, is a little bit time, you know, costs a bit too much time for now. But and the last thing I wanted to say, the, the letting the winners run part uh, that I try to do with tools like Wiz, understand where the space is. You know, this week for my particular style of trading has been choppy. So I have not been able to catch many of the, many of the wins I would like to see because the market is rangy. Two weeks ago, a week ago was a lot better for me because the market had that, went that distance, it moved that extra mile, it kept trending, it kept moving. Now it's kind of like up, down, up, down. So for, for my style of trading, uh, it, it's, a little bit more choppier uh, and that's why keeping the losses short is important so I don't get into a drawdown here right so I'm still slightly up but it's marginal whereas the last two weeks for me were, were, were pluses nice pluses uh, if you're trading intraday more intraday perhaps uh, like Nenet is, is looking more at lower time frames I also occasionally do that uh, it depends you know it, de it depends from one week, I look more at swing trades. The other, I try to also add some intraday trades. Uh, he's looking at smaller targets, like you know, quicker within within the day. And for 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 him, this type of this type of market environment is is fine. There's no, it's not a problem, right? For me, I would like to see sometimes that follow through, which which I didn't get. And it depends on your own kind of style of trading. Everyone has their own kind of method of uh, where they want to enter and how, how much patience they have with keeping the trade to the target and stuff like that. That's so personal. And 
you need to find that balance for yourself. But we can give you some ideas, we can give you some tools and thoughts, and then you need to kind of try it out, test it out on demos first, of course, to get a feeling for what might be good for you, then slowly but surely on a live account with small little risks to, to test whether that theory is, is indeed holds up for you, uh, et cetera. So that's how I uh, approach it. Any, any questions, perhaps? Um, let me know. I like to look at uh, naked charts and with a few indicators, basically. And I like to look at my SWOT uh, software uh, template and, um, and wave analysis, of course. So those are my kind of my viewing modes. So that's about it from my side. Uh, if you have any questions, let us know. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a quick look what's going on next week. We can, we can, of course, sign up for some new webinars. Maybe you already joined our webinars with regards to Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. But if not, if you're looking at the recording, perhaps, here you go. Go to admiralmarkets.com, education, forex, and CFD webinars. But it's only really one tab of so many. And I know that could be a bit overwhelming when you look at the website at first. And I know that we don't have much time nowadays to, uh, to look at the websites, but I encourage you to take a minute or two and try to find the things that might be useful for you. Maybe here at the bottom, courses to help your trading, articles, analytics, useful tools like market heat map, but of course also simple things like Platforms, I mean, like in regard to plugins and how you can access you know, the software itself, uh, what to trade and how to trade. Now we have a question from uh, Albert. Let's see, what's, when is the best time to scalp? So it depends a little bit of, of how you want to scalp, but uh, yeah, typically the, the, the first three hours of the London session the first three hours of the New York session. And if you are in a maybe a bad time zone for these sessions, you could think about trading the Asian session, perhaps the second part, I guess, but then look at pair, yen pairs, for instance, or, or maybe the Aussie, um, because those pairs do have a little bit more volatility in the Asian session. It also depends how you want to trade. Of course, the market doesn't move as much. Let's say after New York closes, there's a little bit of a slowdown. So you're not going to have that volatility. But some traders like the slowness to stake out a position and grab a small trade. Right? So it also depends how you want to tackle it. You know, yes, there is more volatility, of course, in London and New York, beginning of those sessions. But you know, it also depends how you want to tackle that trading. So it, a little bit of it depends on your personal style. I think that Nenet would like likes the, the three hours of New York, three hours of London. So generally speaking, that's the best. But it also depends on what type of trader you're on, you are, et cetera, and what time zone you live in. And, you know, if you're trading beginning of London and it's like 1, 2 a.m. your time or 3 a.m., you know, I don't know, maybe it's doable for you. Maybe you're used to getting up earlier or staying up late, but maybe not the best, you know? So you, those personal things. All righty, uh, let's see. Well, that was just a introduction. I think that for those regular viewers, you already know this, but this is to give you like one overview you know, my kind of philosophy on trading, it's really based on classical technical analysis, looking at the market structure. It is not, it's really trying to trade, trying to find the, the, the bigger patterns available and then finding kind of setups within that, that, that big structure, right? So always keeping in mind on the bigger picture and then kind of trying to find the trades within that. That's my, my goal. All right. So here, more info uh, for getting in touch with Admiral Markets. Uh, you can uh, check out the YouTube, 
Facebook, of course, or the website itself, addonmarkets.com. We'll be back next week with uh, the usual webinars and uh, wish you good trading. Talk to you soon. Cheers.